Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. Yes, this is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with to come together to study another portion of his word. Boys and girls, I pray that you have had a blessed, good week and you are enjoying this fall weather, boys and girls, where it's cool season and it feels so good outside. I pray that you will do something really great during the next school week that um, is extraordinary to show your appreciation for the blessings that God has bestowed upon you. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, we're going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. And then after prayer, we're going to go right into the word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for this time that you have blessed us with, dear Lord, to come together to study another portion of your word. Lord, your word is like treasure, dear Lord. And I pray that every child that takes your word, dear Lord, would allow it to enter into their hearts so that they can become rich walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Lord, bless us all in a mighty way. Give us the courage to walk in the steps of Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us the, the will and the desire to say yes to what is right and no to what is wrong and leave the consequences to you. We know, Lord, that you are with us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we are going to do the right things. Lord, we love you. We adore you. May this word be a seed planted into the hearts and minds of these children that produces roots and bear much fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, so boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we're going into the word for today. Today's word is going to be coming from Luke chapter 22. And the title of today's word is a memorial for him, a memorial for him. We're going to be talking about memorials today, boys and girls. Okay. And so um, first, what is a memorial? Boys and girls, a memorial is an object that serves as a focus to remind people of a person or an event. It's a what? It's an object that reminds people of a person or an event. And it's something, this object, boys and girls, that used as a reminder is because the person or the event has made a change, such a dramatic change in our society that people thought it was worthy for that particular person or event to be memorialized. And so what we're going to do, boys and girls, is we're going to um, first look at a, a little clip um, of a person who did some great works during the 1950s, 60s, that actually made a dramatic difference in the society in which we are living, especially for African-Americans. Okay, and then we'll come back. All right, we're going to pause for a moment and then come back. On to lead a sweeping grassroots effort to end racial discrimination, known as the Civil Rights Movement. Along the way, Martin Luther King Jr. made history and emerged as one of the most influential leaders of the 20th century. Before the Civil Rights Movement began, segregation policies known as Jim Crow laws kept African Americans in a separate and generally inferior world from whites. African Americans went to separate public schools, ate in separate restaurants, and even had to use separate public restrooms. They had to sit in the back of buses and give up their seats to any white people standing. But in 1954, Jim Crow suffered a stunning defeat. The Supreme Court declared that separate schools for blacks and whites were inherently unequal in a case called Brown v. Board of Education. The following year, in Montgomery, Alabama, a tailor's assistant named Rosa Parks refused to give up her bus seat for a white passenger. Parks was arrested, but Martin Luther King organized a full-fledged boycott of the Montgomery City bus system. Thirteen months later, the buses integrated. The Montgomery boycott inspired more efforts to end segregation. In 1963, King and other civil rights leaders organized the March on Washington. More than 200,000 people came to the nation's capital to demand equality for blacks and to urge Congress to pass pending civil rights laws. Standing at the base of the Lincoln Memorial, King spoke the words, I have a dream today, describing his hope for a future in which all men would be brothers. The Civil Rights Movement was changing the nation. In 1964, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act, 
which made racial discrimination in public places illegal. The same year, King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. On April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. But the movement he helped to lead lived on, inspiring other groups, such as Hispanics, women, and the disabled, to fight for equal treatment under the law and completing King's legacy of greater social justice for all Americans. Okay, so boys and girls, what happened is that because of all of the sacrifices in which Dr. Martin Luther King made, oh, he made so many all the way to death. Because of those sacrifices, we experienced some extraordinary freedoms that we did not have back in the 1950s and 60s, boys and girls. Things in which he fought for and a lot of other people who surrounded him fought for. And because of the contribution in which he has made to society, especially to us African-Americans within this um, nation in which we're living, there was decided to create a, an object to remind us of the sacrifices that have been made during the civil rights era that gave us such freedoms. Freedoms to live where we want to, freedom to go to school where we want to, freedom to eat where we want to, freedom to just walk the streets wherever we wanted to, boys and girls. Those are things that was not um, ours so, as we take, so, um, take for granted right now. They were not so um, easily um, obtained back in the 1950s and 60s. They had to be fought for, freedom to vote the right to vote, all of these things, boys and girls, was triggered by Dr. King and the work in which he did and the, the sacrifices in which he made the um, just to fight oppression, to fight inequality, to fight just discrimination and racism and all of those things. And downtown Washington, D.C., there's this object that was placed there. And the purpose of that object is not for us to worship the object, object nor to worship Dr. King, but to remind us of the sacrifices in which he's made and the difference that his sacrifices have made in this society and this United States of America. Amen. Amen. And so today, boys and girls, what we're going to be talking about another memorial. This memorial is in the New Testament, and it's a um, memorial that we participate in every first Sunday of each month, and it's called the Lord's Supper. Some call it communion. Some call it the Last Sup Supper, and there are certain objects in the Lord's Supper that we use to remind us of the the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We use the bread and we use the, the fruit of the vine, which we call grape juice. So let me give a little backstory first. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered all of his disciples in this upper room to have what we call the Last Supper. It was um, they called the Day of the Unleavened Bread on which the Passover lamb had been sacrificed. And so, boys and girls, so this, <clears throat> this is a time in which um, Jesus actually wanted to fellowship with all of his disciples. And while he was there, he took some bread and he broke it. And he said, <clears throat> take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, which represents the, um, the his blood and said, this blood is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you, as you do it in remembrance of me. And for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death until he comes. In other words, Jesus wanted us to remember what he's getting ready to do, which is to die on the cross for all of our sins. And he wants us to do this and remember. So as often as we um, partake of the Lord's Supper, we remember the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The bread, bread reminding us of the body of Jesus. That's in Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And then where it says the body was, um, his body was given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 24. It said his body was broken for us. And so um, there's um, discussion as to whether that, what that broken actually meant. But we do know that Jesus suffered before he actually um, was nailed to the cross. He was beaten and he was um he was um, mocked, he was slapped around, he was spat upon, crown of thorns were put on his head, all kinds of things will happen. happen. And some people say that that represents the brokenness of Jesus' um, body. And then there's the grape juice, which reminds us of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross 
for our sins. That's in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, and 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 25. And boys and girls, the purpose of this, why you think of what's the purpose of a memorial? It's an object so that we can focus on to remind us of the sacrifice that either a person made or an event that actually happened. Well, we're going to, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are reminded of the sacrifices in which Jesus made. And we're reminded of the event, the actual crucifixion. So we are reminded of both the person and the event, the person and the event when we partake of the Lord's Supper. And boys and girls, the Lord's Supper is so serious. It's serious to God, and therefore it, need, it must be serious to each one of us. Because here's what the word says. I'm going go to um, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Here's what the word of the Lord says, beginning in verse number 26. This is for, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And then it goes on and says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup in an unworthy way will be guilty of sin and against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats this bread and drink this cup for anyone who eats or drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord will eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many of you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. In other words, boys and girls, there are people who were taking the Lord's Supper, but, but not respecting it. And many who got sick, many got weak, and some fell asleep. Now, once they fell asleep, I'm not talking about taking a nap. I'm talking about die because the Lord's Supper is serious. And so when we commemorate the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to do it with dignity and we want to do it with respect, with dignity and respect. And our hearts must be right. We can't go before the presence of God, partaking of the Lord's Supper, and our hearts is all dirty and filthy with sinfulness, the things that we've tried to hide from him. God sees everything and he's not going to accept or receive our sacrifice or partaking of the Lord's Supper if we do not do it with the right dignity and respect. Does that make sense, boys and girls? So remember, memorials are established to show honor and appreciation for the sacrifice of the person that a person has made. Because their sacrifice, boys and girls, gives us hope. In other words, Dr. King, when he made this sacrifice, boys and girls, that gave us hope of freedom. And Jesus' sacrifice gave us the ultimate freedom. That is freedom from our sins and the hope of eternal life. So is Jesus worthy? Yes, he is. Because he voluntarily, he left the throne of heaven and all that he had to offer and became a lowly bond servant and was obedient to death on the cross. And he was raised from the dead. And we now have hope of eternal life. So all he asks us to do is to remember his death, his burial, his res resurrection. Some do it weekly. Some do it um, monthly as for partaking of the Lord's Supper. But whenever we do it, we use the objects, right? The bread, which represents the body of God, of Jesus, and the, the, the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So boys and girls, that is a memorial for him. The Lord's Supper is the memorial for Jesus Christ, for what he has done for us, given us eternal hope that we can lean upon. So what we do is we reflect on what Jesus did to enable that to happen. Because if it wasn't for Jesus dying on the cross, our sins would not be forgiven and we would not have a chance to spend an eternity in the kingdom of heaven. So we thank Jesus for the sacrifice in which he made. Amen. Amen. So, boys and girls, the Lord's Supper is for those who have been saved from their sins. Those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their um, Savior, they don't, it's just, um, they don't have hope, boys and girls. So there's no need for them to celebrate. There's no reason to celebrate because without Jesus Christ, there is no hope. And so what are we celebrating? We are not celebrating. So that's why those who have not been born again, those who have not become Christians, they do not partake of the Lord's Supper. But those who have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord and have been saved, they have a reason to celebrate and partake of the Lord's Supper. Boys and girls, are you one of those individuals who have never partaken of the Lord's Supper because you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? 
Today could be the day of salvation for you. All you have to do is just say this very simple little prayer. This prayer that takes um, advantage of the blood of Jesus. Talking to God so that God can use the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross to wash away your sins, unite you with him so that you have eternal life. And you now have a reason to celebrate with the rest as we partake of the Lord's Supper. Repeat this prayer after me if you have that desire, boys and girls, to actually begin the, the celebration of memorializing the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ by partaking of the Lord's Supper. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I am a sinner. I have done some bad things in my life. And I understand that my sin separates me from you. But I believe that you love me and that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for all my sins. I believe that Jesus was buried and he rose again. Please forgive me of my sins. Now I ask Jesus to come into my heart and to become the Lord of my life, to be my master, to be my ruler, and to be my king. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for saving my soul by cleansing my soul with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Boys and girls, if you said that prayer with all your heart, that blood of Jesus that washed the washed that blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross that washed away your sins has now united you with Jesus Christ and God, and you are part of his family forever. And now that you are part of his family, celebrate with us when we partake of the Lord's Supper on the first Sundays of each month. Amen? Amen. Boys and girls, may God bless you, and may God keep you. Amen.